it's Hi, my Nick. fellow who's just hey it's my fellow who's just Siobhan <laughs> so glad to see you today so um I you just saw that clip from Draymond right Draymond does a lot of talking um there was also like a really popular um clip or like quote going around from him on Twitter also where he was just like we dominated for like 42 minutes of the game we'll be fine and just kind of dismiss you know the idea that there's anything to worry about and look you expect the Warriors to speak like that but I think Mm -hmm. the reaction from a lot of people was like um Dre you did not play that well so you know you maybe (laughs) shouldn't be talking so confidently um you have a lot of experience with Draymond Green and his comments because you do a lot of coverage for the Miami Heat with Heat Beat um and he had some comments to make about who the Warriors would be playing after they clinched the finals berth and sort of dismissed the Miami Heat and the players there didn't take kindly to it. So what what, what were your thoughts on Dre's comments, his postgame comments? You know, I just didn't want to be dismissed that easily. You know, if Boston was who was going to come out of that, out of that, um, out of, out of that series, cool, fine. You know, I appreciate the things that Boston can do um, versus some of the things that Miami can and can't do. Um, but I, I guess, like you said, you, you kind of expect think he talks too much. I, I was like, do you think I he talks too much? Because like, even like yesterday I, after the game, do you think the comments were appropriate? I mean, they're appropriate for him. I, I, it's just who he is. I don't know if it's too much, too little. I don't know that you can really judge it. It's annoying, you know, when it's directed at you, but um, when it's for you and, and he has reason to back it up, you can't be but so, so, so mad. It's annoying because they continue right. to back it up, but... <laughs> So game one, it happened last night. Mm-hmm. I really want to get your thoughts on this series because you, your team, uh, the Heat, they played the Celtics and you, you're very intimately familiar with this team and, and how they play. And after that series, um, I think it was actually before game seven, but in one of the post games, Ime, the Celtics coach made some comments and he said that like, I think it was after game seven, after they won, he's like, look, the Heat in a way sort of prepared us right for the Warriors because there's there's some similarities so what like what are some of those similarities you think he was alluding to and did you see um similarities in how the Celtics approached the Warriors or like did they take a different approach from your opinion from what I saw they approached it quite similarly which is why I really didn't have an issue with Marcus Smart's comments like this isn't Miami that they are playing um and, and they were playing Golden State in the same coverages I was so annoyed um that Miami lost because I thought you know, throughout the series, from the very first game, they were getting really, really good looks. And and um, maybe Miami prepared Boston in the way that um, Miami runs similar things, but they just don't have um, that skill of, of players. They don't have the talent. Um, they don't have, you know, these generational types of shooters, but they have guys who have been stepping up for them and playing well from them all season. So I think um, Miami is not a team that, that turns down the mid-range. They just couldn't hit any of them. Uh, Golden State is going to hit, you know, a pretty decent clip, right? You can't play Steph in a in a drop like um, you and Amon were talking about earlier. And in and, and what you think is um, recoverable enough space, you know, D Rob or I'm sorry, Rob Williams, you know, you being long, really is 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 a bit too much. These guys are getting the ball out quick, and it's probably a good look. So um, from what I saw in Game One. Um, it wasn't too dissimilar from from how they played Miami. The difference for a large portion of the game is um, Golden State made, you know, the shots that they were taking. Steph is taking runners from like the elbow, which is where that little pocket of space is, right? Yeah. Boston plays, you know, plays to their to the shooters. Yeah. So you have this really small sliver and Steph is giving you floaters from the elbow. Jimmy is not doing that. Tyler is not doing that for Miami. So um, I'd be interested to see how Boston approaches Um, their defensive scheme going into game two. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about defense, right? But it's for this series, it's been really focused on the Celtics. Um, yeah. you know, and there's that, the, the old adage that defense wins championships. And I agree with that. The Warriors have actually always prided themselves on being a defensive team as well. And that shakes out. So, um, but there hasn't been a lot of talk about their defense in going into this finals. It's been like, oh, best offense versus defense, but no one's talking about their defense. So what did you think about how they like chose to de- defend last night? Because the Celtics got hot in the fourth and a lot of people's takeaway was like, oh, that's an outlier. And they're not, you know, they, they can't do that again. 
But they did that a few times in the series with with the Heat. So what do you think about that idea that we shouldn't expect this from the Celtics again? And I, I love that you said that because I think a lot of us as Heat fans, we're kind of banking on that same thing, right? Like, all right, you know, I see you the, the first game or so. You're not going to do that twice more, thrice more. And, and they did. Um, and so I, I thought um, Golden State's approach was um, – not necessarily, I don't know if I considered it too um, like wildly interesting, but they 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 focused a lot on Jason, right? As soon as he's coming off of these pin downs, off of these screens, he, he has a guy, um, you know, in his lap for the pull up. But he's slithery enough. His, his developed handle over the years has has opened up so much more of his game. So he's getting two feet in the paint and he's driving, kicking. Derek White hasn't missed an important shot in the last like I eight know. games. <laughs> um, Marcus Smart has having a new child may be a part of it. I you know, Derek White's a new father. Know, the, <laughs> the new father, the new father uh, thread is is something that needs looking into. But you know, Marcus Smart has has Marcus Smart being a consistent shooter from them really really opens up a lot um, and takes some of the responsibility, ball handling and shot making off of Jason and Jalen. So um, I'd be interested too in, in how you know Golden State counters. Do they? I don't know. Do they? play more in a drop? Do they hug him tighter, um, get closer out to, to Boston shooters? Um, same thing, Boston defended Golden State in a couple of interesting ways that I thought, like getting high side on what Golden State likes to make, you know, a lot of those backdoor cuts, but trusting that they could recover quick enough, and, and they did. So um, I'm really interested in the the, the coaching, the, the chess match, and, and how we adjust game from game. Do you think... Boston is a great defense. So I've always been saying that, but do you think they're now being a little overrated because I'm hearing like they're the greatest defense in like NBA history. And I think they're a great defense, but, um, and maybe like one of the top ones, I don't even know how we measure that, but I just feel like now people are talking about them. Like there's some indestructible force. (laughs) I mean, they're good. Right. But I don't, I know for certain that they haven't faced an offense as juiced as Golden State's was. Like for with them in the Miami series, right? Kyle Lowry is dribbling the ball on the left side. I'm watching Jimmy Butler just make direct line cuts and finding himself open. And so to contend with all of the chaos that that Draymond and Steph have going on on one side and have to worry about Clay and Otto and Andrew and all of these guys slashing and, and stuff, um, you know. Um, off the ball, I think poses a different challenge than they've seen throughout the course of the of the season. I don't know that there's anyone um, on the East in the Eastern Conference quite like Golden State's um, offense. There's no one in the league like Golden State's offense, right? But I think Miami is a little bit of a facsimile, just better shot makers over there. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I, it, it's it's interesting. It's I, it's I just keep coming back to just wanting to see, you know, kind of where where it is that they they take it from here. Yeah, you know, I'm curious because Poole didn't play that well last night, but he's a really important no. part of, of Golden State, what, what they got going on. And, and Iman spoke on this a little bit when she was on where she said, you know, we kind of need him for offense, but his defense isn't as great. And you guys had sort of a similar situation with Tyler Hero in the Heat series. I mean, him <laughs> and Jordan Poole are actually compared a lot as players. Because I I do think one of the things that hurt the Heat is the fact that, like, the way that they have to play him, right, more for his offense than his defense. And it's a a similar thing that's happening, you know, with the Warriors. So, and there's been a lot of talk about Poole's contract in the offseason and if he's going to, like, get this big contract and also, like, should he start? That's been a conversation throughout the postseason. And so I'm wondering in terms of the Warriors, like, and the heat they're in a similar situation but what is the, like what do these guys need to do to improve to like really be helpful to their teams and in this series particularly what can jordan Poole do to help his team so like he can be beneficial for the warriors and help them like get past the, the celtics so i think so starting with tyler i I'm fine if it's, I want to, you know, become a starter, right? If I want to continue to put in the work in the off season and show that I should like flat out, I should be started. He, he was missed, I think in the Boston series, um, his game lends itself to um, a lot of the ways that Boston plays defense, um, much more so than some of the other guys on our roster do. Um, 
but just it's my fourth year. I think I've earned it. Like, tell me the reasons you think you, you've earned it aside from it being your fourth year. We need Tyler's juice in the offense, um, but we we need it on the bench, too, until, you know, whatever offseason moves are, are made or aren't. Um, and so I think he just has to continue to to grow as a playmaker, make better decisions. And I, and I would definitely say the same thing for Jordan Poole. I was watching the game um, last night and. You know, first time on on the stage, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, I, I I saw him pressing a bit, you know, um, at a time where they were trying to like chip back in, either chip back into Boston's gain more momentum, momentum, or or just kind of stymie, just like settle down a little bit. Um, I watched him like press the gas, and and the one time he tried to take whomever it was off the bounce, and, and Rob William, you know, wedged it between the rim and the backboard. Um, a little bit of his decision making too. I think the next step for Jordan to be, you know, more consistent. I don't know if it's necessarily in a starting role or not. Um, but just be a better playmaker, settle himself down, um, not be so sped up, um, and, and just continue to read coverages and anticipate. You know, he's playing with Golden State. He's already accustomed to anticipating. You know, kind of um, a play ahead. But I think from having the ball in your hand, it, that that type of dynamic is a little bit different. So um, he has he has some ways that, that he can improve, but he's already made, you know, really huge jumps. And he seems like a guy that's, you know, a student and, and wants to continue to get better. Both of them do. So I'd be interested. Tyler jumped out the window a little bit. And I think there's some other guys on the roster who might have something to say about that, but we'll talk yeah. about that in the off season. <laughs> For sure. Siobhan, thank you so much for coming to the show. Y'all heard all the basketball thank talk. You. She's great at video <laughs> breakdown. So thank you. I wish we could chat longer, but um, hopefully we'll be back and you can talk again with me soon. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.